Whenever you work with data in Python, you're probably going to come across a module called numerical Python, or in short, NumPy. So in this video, we're going to take a brief look at the basics. To get started with NumPy, you can open up a new PyCharm project, and down in the terminal, you first have to install this module by writing pip install NumPy. To check that it is really installed properly, you can quickly write in pip list into the terminal, and this will list up all the modules which you've installed. Now in this list, you should find NumPy somewhere. So as you can see in my case, I have it here, so it's installed properly. If we want to use NumPy in one of our projects, we need to make sure that we import NumPy. And uh, one of the most common conventions here is that you import the module as NP. The convenient thing about importing with this abbreviation is that whenever you want to reference something within the NumPy module, you don't have to write out NumPy every time. You can simply write NP. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is NumPy arrays and how they compare to other data types that we get with a clean installation of Python out of the box, such as lists and tuples. You'll probably already be aware that whenever you want to create a Python list, all you need to do is you need to use square brackets and then put the numbers you want to put inside the list within these square brackets. In this case, we're simply going to use three zeros. And similarly, if you want to create a tuple, you can use the three zeros again, but this time you need to make sure to enclose it with rounded brackets, and then you have a Python tuple. And so now moving on to the NumPy array, one way to create a NumPy array which is filled with three zeros is to write NP dot zeros, and then within brackets, put a three. And this is going to create a NumPy array with three zeros inside. We're going to have a look at several other ways to create NumPy arrays, but we'll get there in just a moment. So now we have successfully created three variables, one of which is a NumPy array. If we want to now check what data type each of these individual um, variables is, all we need to do is we need to print out the type. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see on the right hand side, we can see that the first one is to no surprise a list, the second one is a tuple, and the third one is our NumPy ND array. For those of you wondering what ND array stands for, it stands for N dimensional array. And we're gonna get to why that name makes sense a bit later on in the video. But now that we have confirmed that we have a list, a tuple, and a NumPy array by checking the data types of each of these variables, let's go ahead and check the data types of each individual element uh, contained within these variables. In order to do that, we can go ahead and print the type and then within the parentheses of the type, all we need to do is to take our first list, which is going to be a Python list, and reference its first element, which is of the index zero. And we can go ahead and do the same thing for the Python tuple. If we run this and check what the terminal output is, you can see that the data type that is within the Python list and the Python tuple is an integer number. But the question remains, what data type do the individual elements of a NumPy array actually have? So let's go ahead and print the type of the first element within the NumPy array. And when we do that, you'll see that the elements within the NumPy array are 64-bit floating point numbers. So if we go back to the original question of how NumPy arrays compare to Python lists and tuples, the first thing we can say, the elements have a different data type. Another interesting difference of NumPy arrays compared to Python lists and tuples is that with NumPy arrays, we have a lot of flexibility when we specify the data type of the individual elements. As we saw a moment ago, by default, the elements in the NumPy array are floating point 64-bit numbers. But let's say instead of that, you wanted 16-bit integer numbers. To do that, we can simply create a new variable. We're going to call it a underscore NumPy underscore integer 16. And then when we create a NumPy array with zeros, we're going to add a second argument, which is going to be the D type, which is short for data type. And the data type that we're going to choose over here is the 16-bit integer. So now if we do what we did earlier and check what type the individual elements of this array have, you can see that on the right hand side, it tells us, hey, it's a 16-bit integer number. Another thing that is special about these NumPy arrays compared to lists and tuples in Python is that the individual elements of a NumPy array need to have the same data type. 
This restriction makes NumPy arrays particularly efficient when we work with large datasets. Next up, I want to show you a couple of alternative methods to make NumPy arrays. We've already seen that there's a dedicated method to create a NumPy array which is filled with zeros. There is also one which creates a NumPy array filled with ones. To do that, all we need to write is ones and then in parentheses, we need to write five. And you can see when I execute that, I get this very nice NumPy array with five entries and they're all one. Another way to fill a NumPy array is to use the method linspace. Here you can add a beginning number, an ending number, and say how many numbers in between you want to generate. So let's move on and create a NumPy array with the numbers one through 10. All we need to do is we need to write the method linspace, then we have to write in the beginning number, the ending number, and how many numbers we want in between. So now that I've gone ahead and done that, on the right hand side, you can see in the terminal output, we have the numbers one through 10 in a NumPy array. It is also possible to create a NumPy array from a Python list. We can do that by simply taking the Python list and sticking it into the NumPy array, like this. Subsequently, we can go ahead and print out the array alongside the data type of the array, and you can see in the terminal output that we get the NumPy array, as well as the data type, which is in fact a NumPy ND array. But you don't necessarily need to stick in the list of numbers into the array function. Another way you can go about doing this is of course first to declare a variable such as list, and then subsequently take this variable and pass that in as an argument into the array function. And you can see if we go ahead and print this, we get the numbers six through to 10. The next question that I wanna answer is how can we reference individual numbers from a NumPy array? The convenient thing here is that the referencing of numbers in a NumPy array is very similar to referencing numbers that are within a list or a tuple. So if, for example, we want to reference the very first number in the array called E, we can go ahead and print E and then within square brackets write the index zero. And if we want to reference the last number instead, we exchange the zero for a minus one. And we can see that if we execute this, we get the last number. And how about we try and output the first three numbers? We can do that by adding a range. So we can write zero and then colon three, and that gives us the first four numbers as you can see on the right hand side. One question that is still open from earlier is why are the arrays in NumPy actually called n-dimensional arrays? And the reason for that is because the arrays that we're talking about here can have multiple dimensions. Let's for example, make an array which has the dimensions two by three. To do that, we're going to create a new variable and call it list underscore 2D. And we're gonna go ahead and set it equal to a list which contains two distinct lists with three numbers each. And if we pass this list of lists into the array function in the NumPy module, we get a two by three dimensional array. So one way to check that is by first printing out the NumPy array called F and printing out the shape of the NumPy array. So in the terminal output, you can see that we have this very nice array, which has in the first row, the numbers one, two, three, and in the second, the four, five, and six. And we see that the shape is a two by three ND array. And the reason why it has this shape is because it has two columns and three rows. Earlier, we had a look at how we can reference numbers within an ND array that only has one row. If we have more than one row, the referencing of individual elements gets a little bit more complex. If, for example, we only want to reference the very first row, we can write F and then within square brackets, zero. And you can see in the console output, we get the first row. If we want to access the very first row and the very first element of the first row, we have to add another zero in square brackets. So now you can see in the console output, we're getting the number one, which is the very first number in the very first array. So let's look at another example. How about we try and access the second number within the second array? To do that, we can simply write F and then one within square brackets twice. And you see, we get the number five, which is exactly the number we wanted because it is the second number in the second array. Since we know how to reference numbers now, how about we try and change individual numbers from an array? 
Let's say we have this array G and it has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, and 6. And the change we want to make is to the very first number, so we want to change this one at the beginning to a 2. To do that, all we need to do is we need to write g and then in square brackets 0 and then set it equal to 2. So after we print that, you will see that the very first number is now not 1, but it's 2. Now what could we do if we wanted to change all the 3's in the array into 29's? So let's create another array, we're going to call it h, and it's going to have the same numbers that we had in our initial g array. So as you can see, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, and 6. And we want to take both of those 3s and turn them into 29s. And the way to do that is to write h, and then within square brackets, we need to write h again, and then equals equals 3, and then we need to set that to 29. And that's going to change all the 3s in this array to 29s. And this you can also see in the right hand side in the console output. And I want to give you one final example of how you can conveniently change data in an array. Let's say you want to change all the numbers that have an index smaller than 3 to the number 99. So let's create the array i and insert the same number sequence that we used twice now. So 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, and 6. And we want to change all the numbers which have an index smaller than 3 to 99. Then we can write i and then in square brackets i smaller than 3, close the per, uh, square brackets, and then set that to 99. And if we print this, you'll see that the numbers which have an index smaller than 3 have changed to 99 in the terminal. There is one final topic remaining that I want to still cover in this video, and that is the comparison between copies of arrays and views. Let's go ahead and talk about views first. When you create a view of an array, the view is still going to be connected to the initial array. So if you make a change to the view, you're making a change to the original array. Let me demonstrate that. We're going to create an array j and it is going to have the numbers 1 through to 4. In addition, we're going to create the view k, which is going to have only the first two numbers of the array j. Now, if we go ahead and print this out, you can see that we have the initial array j with the numbers 1 to 4 and the view k, which has the numbers 1 and 2. How about now we go and add 1 to the numbers in the view. So you can see once we've added the one to the view, the numbers in the initial view, which was one and two, have incremented by one. So they're now two and three. But the numbers haven't only changed in the view, k, they've also changed in the initial array, j, because you can see in the terminal, we have the array which starts with 2 and 3 instead of 1 and 2 as we had it initially. So you can clearly see that the view k is clearly not independent of the initial array j. If you want to create independence between two arrays, you need to make sure to make a copy. So to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and try that. We're going to create an array l and it is going to have the numbers 1 through 4. And in addition to that, we're going to create a copy of l which is going to be called M. And this copy is only going to have the first two elements of the array L, so the numbers one and two. All right, so once we've made this copy and we can go ahead and print it out, we can print out the original um, array L and the copy M. So you can see in the terminal output, we have the array L, which is one through four, and the copy M, which has the numbers one and two. Now we're going to add 1 to the array m and then print all of this out again. Now you can see that the array m has um, numbers that have been incremented by 1 because instead of 1 and 2, it has the numbers 2 and 3. But the original array l has not been changed. Here the numbers have remained the way they were, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so we're going to leave it right there. If it helped you out, then make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to this channel, and we'll see each other in the next video.